for those of you who don't know me, I'm Tyler Seward. I'm a medical oncologist and I, uh, at UC San Diego. I treat a lot of genital urinary diseases, but I uh, really my specialty is bladder cancer, urothelial carcinoma. It's really my passion. Um, and so I was asked to give a, um, a talk about cystectomy versus trimodality therapy for muscle invasive bladder cancer. And um, I'd start off by saying this is what the talk should be. So cystectomy and trimodal therapy for muscle invasive bladder cancer. So this is, um, the talk was asked, and I think that we sometimes will think about this, as which one is better? But really, this is a conversation. At UCSD, we, ha we talk about every single patient with muscle invasive bladder cancer as a multidisciplinary team. We meet on Thursday mornings, and it is very important that urologists, medical oncologists, radiation oncologists all discuss patients because it's really a team sport. So um, disclosures again. This is my spiel, is that here's the current treatment strategies for muscle invasive bladder cancer. On the left here, we have cystectomy, which has been shown that if you add patients, if you're able to give them neoadjuvant cisplatin-based therapy, you improve disease-free survival and five-year overall survivals, at least in the, the Grossman paper where this was done back in 2003, look like 57 versus 43%. On the other hand, we have chemoradiation for muscle invasive bladder cancer. So um, this was led by Nick James and published in the New England Journal of Medicine. And what this study did is it took patients who had muscle invasive bladder cancer and randomized them to either radiation alone or radiation with chemotherapy. And definitely the patients who had chemotherapy with 5-FU mitomycin seem to have an improvement in um, uh, new, at least a numerical improvement, though you can look at that hazard ratio and that p-value. So when I am talking today, what I am not going to do, I'm not going to bash cystectomies. I just won't do it. Cystectomies are life-saving therapies. I'm not here to put an end to cystectomies. They can be curative, and for many, it's the right option. Very large multifocal cancers, variant histologies where systemic therapy and radiation therapy may not be effective, significant urinary distress apart from the cancer. When somebody comes to me and I'm even thinking about chemoradiation for your bladder cancer, the first thing I think to myself is, is it a bladder worth saving? If you are peeing all day long, six months even before your diagnosis, unrelated to your diagnosis, and your bladder is causing you a whole bunch of issues, there are plenty of people that would probably benefit from a cystectomy over chemoradiation just from symptoms alone. But why are we even talking? Why did it even come up that we should talk about this? Why does it continue to come up? Why is it a point at every ASCO meeting that we talk about this? It's because cystectomies have complications. There are two major um, uh, methods for urinary diversion that we use now. Dr. Bagrodi is going to talk more about it. He'll sound sweeter about these. <laughs> the complications in include quality of life issues, infections, renal insufficiency, ureteral obstruction. Those are just the conduits. For the patients with orthotopic neobladders, these are where they take a part of your intestine and create a new bladder. It's amazing. They keep the, the sphincter that you had before, and hopefully you're able to urinate and not have to catheter, catheterize yourself. This is a great option for patients. But it's not for all patients. Can't do it if the urethra is involved. You have to be able to perform intermittent self-catheterization, and many of these patients are going to require some self-catheterization. And... Not every surgeon knows how to do this. So around the country, this, it's not like uh, you can go to your local urologist and just get a, a neobladder done. Cystectomies have complications. So this is a study that was recently published by uh, James Caddo and all. Um, it, the question of this was looking at open versus robotic surgery for radical cystectomies getting an ileoconduit. 317 patients essentially split half and half. Some important fo facts about this is that readmission rates were 20 to 30 percent, and there were six deaths within 90 days, which 
just doing some math, that's around 2%. So these have complications. And if you've ever seen somebody after a cystectomy, you know that the first couple of months can be tough. Quality of life is an ongoing issue for patients who have conduits. Here's just one retrospective study looking at satisfaction with sex life. When in this retrospective study, they said, how satisfied with, you are with your sex life? Quite a bit, very much, only 12% in the radical cystectomy, 35% in the chemo rads, which is not to say that 35 and 12, those numbers are so big and so different, but certainly about a third, third of patients versus close to 10%, one out of nine patients, that's something. When we are doing trimodality therapy, what this looks like, it involves the urologist who does a maximal debulking TURBT, followed by chemo radiation. That's radiation for four to six weeks, which is toxic, with some chemotherapy, which ain't adding any sunshiny, rosy days. Cisplatin can be tough. 5-FU mitomycin, pretty tolerable, but not nothing. Even low-dose gemcitabine can be tough. And then afterwards, this requires ongoing cystoscopic surveillance, which means you have to have somebody who's pretty reliable because there is a significant chance of recurrence, either muscle invasive disease or non-muscle invasive disease. And this is not for everyone. So when somebody comes in and they say, man, I'm thinking about chemo radiation, that sounds a lot better than getting my bladder out. And I tell them, well, that sounds great. Afterwards, you're going to get a scope every three months for at least probably two years, and then maybe we can do it less frequently. That gives a lot of specifically guys some pause. So you got to know that this is part of the treatment modality. This is not just one and done. Let's forget about it. This is an ongoing surveillance. Oncologic outcomes. So this is the thing that we all talk about. And we all talk about it like we know this data. But this data is just very difficult. There are no definitive randomized trials. You might think, well, you told us about a, that New England Journal of Medicine paper. That was radiation versus chemo radiation, not radiation versus surgery. There was a randomized trial that, was, <laughs> that tried to be done called the SPARE trial. This was a study in the UK, cystectomy versus radiation therapy, with or without chemotherapy. This trial closed due to poor accrual. Patients did not want to be randomized to either get their bladder out or not. They wanted to be part of that decision. So we've had to rely on comparative retrospective studies. These are flawed. No matter what, I'm going to show you one. They've been done a whole bunch. Multiple retrospective studies have demonstrated similar oncologic outcomes. Here's ours. So um, we took, this is a large study that we did in, from the, uh, the VA, 2,300 patients with muscle invasive bladder cancer, trimodality therapy done in about 165 of those patients. When we looked at their oncologic outcomes on multivariate analysis, trimodality therapy versus radical cystectomy with neoadjuvant chemotherapy, what we would think about is a gold standard. What we demonstrated was there was a similar, similar overall mortality and bladder cancer specific mortality in this group. When we looked at it through the eyes of maybe there's an age component to it in patients who are a little bit younger, those patients, if anything, may have benefited a little, little bit more with cystectomy, probably because their runway is longer, but it's hard to know. Maybe it was patient selection. But the patients, especially over the age of 65, seem to do about the same. Trimodality therapy has complications. During treatment in that Nick James trial, the BC2001 study, grade three to four toxicity, GU toxicity was around 20% of patients during it, and then GI toxicity about 10%. That's grade three, four. This isn't just a couple of, you know, a little bit of diarrhea. These are patients that are really symptomatic from their disease. But in late grade, toxicities were rare. So um, grade three toxicities, late, um, late grade three toxicities, only about 7% of patients getting chemo radiation in an RTOG analysis of multiple of their studies. Late cystectomy rates, about seven to 15%. Probably these are not performed as 
as many, um, not as many are performed as we should be doing, oftentimes due to patient preference. Probably there is some role for a cystectomy after that radiation therapy to really get rid of that recurrent disease. Quality of life outcomes. So um, in a study that was done, this was a retrospective study of 226 patients that were involved in those RTOG studies. These were all patients who, um, from 1990 to 2011, eligible for RC and were disease-free greater than two years. So they had to be alive. They got quality of life instruments. 173 responded. 64 who had received trimodality therapy. 109 with radical cystectomy. On multivariate analysis, trimodality therapy compared to radical cystectomy had better general quality of life, higher scores on physical, social, emotional, cognitive functioning, associated with better bowel functioning, urinary symptoms scores were about the same, better sexual function, and better body image. And this field is moving. There are new systemic therapies that are being in, um, evoked in the perioperative setting that are likely going to increase our local disease control as well and may make bladder sparing options even more fashionable. One of these very exciting studies is a SWOG 1806 study. This is a trial looking at concurrent chemoradiation with or without atezolizumab for, locally, uh, for localized muscle invasive bladder cancer. It's essentially standard of care plus or minus immunotherapy looking to see if we can improve outcomes. That's headed up by uh, Parminder Singh. So when I think about trimodality therapy, I, how do I think about it? How do I select patients? Well, the first thing is that I'm not selecting the patients. The patients drive the ship. They're coming in. You're talking a little bit about it. But oftentimes they're saying, listen, I don't want to die of bladder cancer. What's the best option? Sometimes they're coming in and they're saying, doc, I'm not getting my bladder out. What do you got for me? We're kind of done right there. If you're absolutely not getting your bladder out, chemo radiation is what I got for you. Probably with a bunch of systemic therapy, though. Some clinical features that pushes me one way or the other. Baseline good bladder function, like we talked about. Is it a bladder worth saving? Is it T2, T3 disease? If you get into T4 disease, probably there's a high chance of uh, recurrence and uh, residual disease. The histology. Lack of hydronephrosis. This isn't a... Um, Absolute contraindication, but certainly with chemoradiation, it looks like these patients have increased risk of uh, metastatic disease. CIS, radiation has not been an effective treatment for CIS, so if there's a lot of CIS in there, a little bit of CIS, okay, a lot of CIS, probably not okay. High risk of disease recurrence within the bladder. And then are they willing to adhere to follow-up? So um, in conclusion, the best bladder you'll ever have is a bladder you're born with. Trimodality therapy is an excellent treatment option for well-selected patients with muscle invasive bladder cancer and should be considered probably more than we're doing now. Newer effective therapies are likely to increase the rate of local disease control, which will further interest, uh, will give further interest in bladder preservation strat strategies. And multidisciplinary tumor boards are essential to arriving with the best treatment possible for patients with muscle and face of bladder cancer. And I am happy to tell you that Dr. Bergordi, who's going to come up here and um, tell you the, the, the benefits of cystectomy, always a part of that conversation and always willing to discuss all possible options, which I uh, greatly appreciate. And so do the patients. Thanks again for uh, all your time.